Business owners and political leaders demanding answers in Manatee County how they're hoping to combat red tide. Plus, how businesses on the Sun Coast suffering from the impact of the algae blooms could qualify for money. And a house fire in Sarasota tonight. We were there as fire crews arrived. Your Sun Coast News starts now. You're watching ABC 7 News at 11. Good evening. Breaking news tonight out of Sarasota. Our crew on scene right behind fire rescue responding to a fire near Honore and 17th. Here's what we know so far. Fire rescue responded to a fire alarm a little after 9 o'clock this evening. Ten minutes later, another alarm started going off. Sarasota County Fire Battalion Chief saying that that fire on the two story home took about half an hour to put out. We were able to ascertain that there was no one inside and uh, at this point we've not sustained any injuries to firefighters or civilians. According to fire rescue crews, there were two cats in that home. They were able to find one but have not found the other. The state fire marshal now investigating the cause of that fire. The battalion chief says it looks like it started near the kitchen. Well, tonight, business owners and political leaders demanding answers coming together in Manatee County to show solidarity against the red tide. The crisis has dramatically impacted businesses up and down the Gulf Coast. ABC 7's Rick Adams has more from that gathering in Bradenton Beach. It's a message they want heard loud and clear. Enough is enough. Manatee County business owners impacted by red tide, especially those on or near the Gulf of Mexico, say they want answers and solutions to what's been going on. Robert Baugh, chief operating officer of three restaurants, including the Beach House in Bradenton Beach, says the red tide shouldn't keep people away from enjoying the many great businesses. We want to get a message out that uh, we understand that red tide is a natural phenomenon, but we're open. Uh, the winds change, uh, the beaches are beautiful, there's people in the water, and that we are open for business. For many of the businesses near the Gulf, they have seen a 30 to 60 percent decline in business because of the red tide. In addition to the business owners, political leaders were on hand at this gathering as well. Bob Slicker is general manager of the Swordfish Grill and Tiki Bar in Cortez. He tells us his restaurant and so many others are really feeling the impact. We're still all in business and you know, we all have air conditions and inside. So if red tide was a problem, you could still come out and eat. No one is served bad fish. All of our fish is fresh. We catch our own fish over 10 miles out there. These meetings will be held each day at different locations throughout Manatee County for at least the remainder of the week. The group is hopeful that many more folks will continue to come out. Well, that next meeting will take place at the Swordfish Grill in Cortez. That's happening tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. We did a survey of the tourism industry to see how business was August 1st through 7th. And unfortunately, as the responses are coming in, it's getting more and more negative. Uh, we're up to about a 6% business loss. Well, that's more than $500,000 of estimated loss for businesses in the county. Tourism leaders are now faced with the task of reassuring tourists scared away by the red tide that the Sun Coast is still a great place to visit. Because of the local state of emergency, half a million dollars in funds are now in place to help areas hit hard economically because of the red tide. Struggling business owners in both Sarasota and Manatee County will also be getting compensation for their red tide struggles. Businesses can now apply for interest free loans. And as the entire southwest coast of Florida continues to battle with red tide, Moat Marine Laboratory is testing something new that they believe may be the solution to getting rid of it. They put it to test this week in a Boca Grand Canal after testing it out for several months in their lab right here in Sarasota. It's a machine that uses an ozone treatment system to kill red tide cells that are in high concentration. It processes almost 300 gallons of water per minute by breaking down the toxin infested water, injecting it with ozone and then pumping out clean water. Looks like there's some great promise there. So I think it'll be a combination of physical chemical uh, technologies using innovative technologies and using some of Mother Nature's own natural approaches to this, but doing it in a, in a targeted, more efficient way. So I think, there, I think there is great hope on the horizon. We just need to keep moving forward and science and technology are going to help us achieve um, the answer and the response that we need for red tide. 
Well, that testing process will last three to four days and Moat Marine will be giving us an update on the results next week. And for all of our latest coverage on the Red Tide outbreak, head over to our website, mysuncoast.com slash red tide. Here now, Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with a look at our first alert forecast. And Bob, I know it is Wednesday, which means that midweek report from the FWC did come out. It did, and it's on our website. I already checked it out earlier. It was on our website, the little story there with the breakdown of this uh, past week's uh, sampling. I talked to a gentleman as well who tests off the coast of Venice. He's still reporting over a million, a million cells per liter down in Venice. So uh, some people are saying it's not as bad and it may be true. It may be breaking up somewhat, uh, but still from the reports here and from the report I read, it's still pretty bad up here along the west coast of Florida. Uh, we have a return though to the southeasterly wind and we did get a little taste of our summer afternoon pattern today, especially from Lakewood Ranch northward up to Parrish, uh, where the rain came down pretty heavy uh, in a short period of time. And even tonight at this hour, we have some storms still hanging around, especially in Arcadia. Look at that big blow up of storms there into central portions of DeSoto County now with a pretty heavy rainfall rate and a lot of lightning going on there. That will continue to work off to the northwest. It should weaken here in the next half hour or so, but uh, keep an eye on that rain near Nocatee stretching up toward Arcadia, some lightning there, and also outflow boundaries creating a few showers near the Venetian along I-75 stretching up toward uh, Clark Road tonight. Uh, look for a few isolated cells here and there. This could also generate some outflow boundaries, which in turn could pop up some other showers and storms around as well. Well, more on all this coming up in just a few minutes. Jacqueline. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. A follow up now to a Sarasota murder suicide investigation that we first told you about yesterday. Sarasota County Sheriff's deputies found two people dead inside a home on Crest Hammock Way on Monday. The medical examiner's office has confirmed that that incident was a murder than suicide. Detectives believe Richard Lapperett shot and killed his wife Sharon before taking his own life. Anyone with information related to this incident is asked to contact the sheriff's office. New at 11, a Venice construction worker recovering in the hospital tonight after falling through the roof of a storage unit. Venice Fire Department say they got to the storage unit near the Plaza Mexico restaurant early this morning. They say they found the middle aged man lying on the floor half conscious. Witnesses say he was walking on the roof when he suddenly fell 15 feet into the building. He was then taken to the hospital in a helicopter. No word on his current condition. The Sarasota Bradenton International Airport announcing the man who has been serving as its chief of police for the past decade is now leaving. James Carlino's last day will be August 31st. Airport officials say Carlino is leaving to pursue teaching opportunities and work in the private sector. This resignation comes as Carlino was the subject of a misconduct investigation at the airport. Suncoast students returned to class this week to find in God we trust signs prominently displayed throughout campus. These are the signs Sarasota County Schools put up. It's all part of a new state mandate that says all public schools must display the state motto in every school and district building. The signs hang in the lobby of each building, but they're only temporary. The district is working to make permanent ones that will look very similar to what's hanging up now. I personally think that we should keep it there because um, this country was founded on those morals. I can see if people do have an issue with it. I personally do not have a problem with it. I don't really practice any religion, but I could see how it could cause any problems with anyone with conflicting um, beliefs or what. In Manatee County, the district has decided to print out the state seal, which already includes the phrase in God we trust and hang those around each district building. So we want to know what do you think? Do you support this move or not? We have a poll on our Facebook page where you can vote and leave your thoughts on that new law. Venice police celebrating the life-saving actions of some of its officers today. Thanks to their quick thinking, three men are alive after going into cardiac arrest. The first incident happened back in January at the Lake Venice Golf Club when two public service aid officers noticed a man fall from his golf cart. Similar, similar scenarios have happened since then with those same officers. They saved the life of a man who went into cardiac arrest while he was swimming in a pool at the Towers Condominium in March. Most recently, they revived a man who was electrocuted yesterday while he was trimming a tree with a saw and it touched the power line. In all three cases, when EMS personnel arrived, they said the quick actions of those officers were the only reason these men were still alive. 
But there was a great philosopher that said, if you save one life, you save a universe. So we save several universes here. We've done really, really good. And it, it's the training. It's just the training of knowing what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And we practice that here, and, and it's paid off. And it isn't just these officers that the 911 dispatchers played a huge role in saving these men by giving instructions of what to do over the phone until help arrived. Sarasota Memorial Hospital celebrating the legacy of a pioneering Suncoast doctor. The late Dr. John Chenault's portrait now hangs at the hospital's internal medicine practice in Newtown. He was the first African-American doctor to gain privileges at Sarasota Memorial. The dedication ceremony included the unveiling of his portrait, a gift from Ringling College of Art and Design, and an honor that many in Sarasota's medical community says is long overdue. We should respect those who came before us and who worked hard in this community, not only in Newtown, but in Sarasota and at the hospital to provide medical care. Organizers say one of the reasons for the portrait is to remind everyone of his background and contributions to our community. Well, stay with us. Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast. Honestly, right then and there, it, my eyes kind of got a little bit teary. Plus, the shocking reason and this woman says she got rejected from a job. And the hilarious actions of this dog as he plays with a jack-in-the-box. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Tomorrow at 9 on Suncoast View. We never miss a chance to celebrate. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. We'll raise a glass with Siesta Key Rum for National Rum Day and celebrate a new version of the Suncoast award-winning product. Sarasota Opera presents performers you might not expect as they wrap up their special summer season. Plus, all-natural nut butters made right here on the Suncoast and Morton's Market is in the kitchen. Tomorrow at 9 on Suncoast View. My California Closets experience has been wonderful. My mother's a huge inspiration. Before she passed away, she would say, you should do something special for yourself. First time I saw my closet, I immediately thought, this is the best thing I've ever done for myself. I call it my Tiffany style closet. I mean, I can shop in my own closet every day. I love that. My name is Cynthia, and this is my California Closet story. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP is the largest locally owned CPAP supply company in the area. Is it time to replace your old equipment? The staff at Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP can show you the most up-to-date CPAP equipment and supplies to meet your sleep apnea needs, including portable travel devices and the SoClean automatic CPAP sanitizer. We serve all of Southwest Florida, giving the highest quality of care with the finest CPAP equipment. Please visit our website, sarasotacpap.com. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Hunger is a growing problem in our area, and a huge number of Suncoast residents are suffering in silence. It could be your coworker, your child's classmate, or your friend fighting to secure their next meal. But you can help. ABC7 is partnering with local organizations to help feed the Suncoast. Go to mysuncoast.com slash hunger to join the fight. Help us. Help the hungry.
Well, another popular event being canceled because of the red tide. This month's Friday Fest at the Van Wazel has been canceled. Van Wazel sits right next to Sarasota Bay, which is still being impacted yeah. by red tide. That event was scheduled to take place on Friday. No word yet on whether it will be rescheduled. So, Bob, you're going to have to hold off on your dance moves. Well, those guys are <laughs> dancing it up right there. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, I mean, this uh, red yeah. tide does occur, and uh, it's uh, been very strong. Uh, you read the report, it's still around, it's still out there. I'm going to think I'm going to go on the boat tomorrow and, and kind of do a survey okay. of Sarasota Bay, yeah, uh, see how good. things are. Yeah, I haven't really been out there yet. Uh, we'll probably bring that to you tomorrow night. If everything goes planned, I'm yeah. not guaranteeing anything. Uh, getting, uh, speaking of the Van Wazel, here is a shot from the Van Wazel. It looks beautiful out there. Uh, when that west wind blows and all the dead fish still around in some areas, it uh, brings that stench on land. And I tell you, I had a little, uh, caught a little bit of that uh, driving into work as that west coast sea breeze kicked in right around uh, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock this afternoon. And boy, you could smell it quite clearly on uh, El Conquistador. And uh, Van Wazel webcam showing a pretty nice sunset, pretty calm out there too. Uh, as far as the photos go, uh, this one, the eagle has landed. This one right there in Sarasota, there downtown, not too far away. Uh, Stephen Smith sending this one in. Uh, actually, I was out on a Fruitville, Fruitville, I believe. Casey Key, look at this gorgeous shot of the sunset tonight with a palm tree. Perfect, Fred. Thank you for that wonderful photo. At least uh, it looks good, doesn't it? It looks beautiful out there. High pressure over North Florida now. Still some storms lingering at this hour. A little unusual to see this much activity, but these uh, should be winding down in the next hour or so, at least over Arcadia. It will be pushing off to the northwest, and some outflow boundaries could generate some other showers down the road here. But uh, right now, the heaviest activity is right there in DeSoto County, stretching up toward uh, Hardy County and into Highlands County. Some pretty big cells. You'll get the motion and movement to the northwest, north northwest at around 5 to 10 miles an hour. And some of those boundaries have caused some other showers to pop up here along I-75, approaching Clark Road in Sarasota, uh, pushing off to the north. Not very intense, but we'll keep an eye on it for you. Palmer Ranch uh, into the Palmer Ranch area, getting a little bit of rainfall at this time. But elsewhere, things are pretty quiet. Had some big storms earlier today along the Seabreeze front from Parrish all the way down to Lakewood Ranch, producing up to an inch and a half to two inches estimates uh, from the Doppler radar site. 78 right now. It's 87 on the humidity. East winds are at 7. And the high today was 1 degree above the average at 91. Uh, 80 in Orlando now, 75 in Jacksonville. It's 84 in Miami. And temperatures in the upper 70s to low 80s across most of the area. The Gulf water temperature remains warm at 87 degrees, and that's not going to cool down anytime soon. Heat index not really a factor at this time. Tomorrow will be, though. In the afternoon, it'll feel like 100 degrees. Uh, that's the heat index on top, and the actual temperature right around 90 degrees. There'll be a few scattered storms again in the afternoon. Not a wide coverage of storms, but still there'll be a few along that sea breeze front. Uh, developing in the afternoon. Well, it's still subtropical, Ernesto, the fifth named storm of the season moving off to the northeast. And we got some good news for the Atlantic Basin, at least down into uh, the Atlantic, the uh, main tropical development region. Uh, it looks as though shear is going to stay high in the Atlantic and the Caribbean. Unfortunately, uh, that's not the case for the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to be a favorable area for development, according to a forecast model uh, for the Gulf. And with the Gulf water temperature still around 90, uh, Jacqueline's right there. Yes, you're on, Jacqueline. Smile. There you go. We'll get back to the maps here in a minute. <laughs> if we can, there we go. Okay, here is Ernesto. A little quick, Jack. We got help there with the ratings there. Uh, Ernesto heading off to the northeast. Uh, 40 mile hour winds right now. It's still uh, actually a subtropical storm. It's moving to the northeast at 10. There's the forecast path and track. Not a concern for us here uh, along the Sun Coast, uh, but we'll keep an eye on the rest of the season. Uh, some big storms moving through Indiana tonight and uh, across portions of the upper Mississippi Valley. For boaters, uh, winds will be out of the southeast, switching to the southwest at 5 to 10 knots. Seas will be 1 to 2 feet and a light chop on the bays and inland waters, uh, so things pretty quiet out there for boating. Uh, and as far as the forecast goes, Thursday, 30% chance for scattered late-day storms. Same on Friday. Uh, Saturday, a little le less activity, but still one or two will be around in the afternoon. We stay with that pattern in the afternoon and evening, but it starts to switch again. We're going to see a trough developing over the eastern portion of the United States, which uh, could bring us that westerly component with showers and storms again on into Tuesday and Wednesday. Jacqueline again. Back All to you. right, thank you, Bob. Well, two women say they were rejected from a job because of their names, and it's not just a hunch. Alex Zotos shows us the email that the company sent them that spells it all out. Thank you for your interest in careers at Mentality Health. 
Unfortunately, we do not consider candidates that have a suggestive ghetto names. We wish you the best in your career search regards. Dornisha Zachary couldn't believe her eyes when she opened up the email from a recent job application. Honestly, right then and there, it, my eyes kind of got a little bit teary. She applied online to the customer service job at Mentality Health, a Chesterfield company. The company looked at my name and said, no, we don't care about what you've done in life. Your name is going to dismiss you completely. But the company's CEO says they were hacked. Chesterfield police are investigating the situation and say it appears the emails, at least 20, might have come from a disgruntled employee. But many say people targeted for, quote, ghetto names is a new. I think this happens all the time. Meltina Burnett's cousin also got the email. Hermesha Robinson posted it to Facebook and it's gone viral. Just the fact that when I read the email, I was just appalled. Other women in Minnesota and Wisconsin also received the email. Their names are unique and have meaning. It's just unique. It's for my mom and my father. My father's name is Herman, so I'm Hermesha. Dora and Dinesha put together is Dornisha. So my name has meaning to me. It's not ghetto. Well, victims of sex abuse by Pennsylvania Catholic priests are speaking out after an explosive grand jury report. The Pennsylvania Attorney General has called it the United States' largest, most comprehensive report into child sex abuse in the Catholic Church. 300 Catholic priests have been accused by a grand jury of sexually abusing more than 1,000 children. The report says priests were raping boys and girls, with church leadership protecting and even promoting the attackers. I don't understand how an organization has more say and more sway in the state that I swore to defend uh, than I do. So there's a bill in the Pennsylvania State House being debated now, uh, and that could bring justice. Well, the Pennsylvania House will vote next month on whether to eliminate the criminal statute of limitations. And at least one of those priests worked in the Sarasota area after being shuffled around in Pennsylvania for years, while a second moved here upon retirement. Reverend Robert E. Spangenberg was superior of the Congregation Retirement Home in Sarasota for a year in 1989. Then in 2002, he was director of an unnamed retirement community in Sarasota before retiring just a year later. In 1988, there is a report that a woman told the diocese that Spangenberg had abused her son. There was also a second priest named in that report who moved to Sarasota after he retired, Reverend Raymond R. Roden. Roden retired in 2002 and moved to Sarasota, where it appears he lived until he died in 2006. A national coalition with deep Florida ties brought its message of pro-offshore oil and natural gas exploration to the state capitol today. Calling itself a bipartisan group of politicians, business groups, and petroleum interests from across the country, the Explore Offshore Coalition is promoting access to domestic offshore fuel, but environmentalists have their doubts. In Florida, we have millions of jobs that are dependent on tourism, that are dependent on having clean beaches. And the bottom line is that it would be irresponsible to put that at risk. We're not talking, by the way, uh, today about drill, baby, drill. We're talking about explore, baby, explore. Let's find out uh, what energy resources we have off the coast of Florida. Many Florida officials, including Governor Rick Scott, have denounced the possibility of drilling near the nation's outer continental shelf. Well, sports is next, but first, here's what's coming up on Jimmy Kimmel. Drum roll, please. Kimmel's new tonight. They know it's true. With the always fired up Tom Arnold. They absolutely know it's true. <laughs> and comedian Gerard Carmichael. You want a J.D. Power? You get it for excellence. Emmy-nominated Kimmel, new tonight on ABC. Ready to open up new opportunities as an electrician? Don't do it yourself. Team up with Mr. Sparky instead. We're locally owned and looking for people like you. We offer our electricians great perks that you just won't get going it alone. And whether you're an apprentice, a master electrician, or somewhere in between, we have a spot for you. Best decision I ever made. Apply online or call today. You don't have to put up with any malarkey. Call 888-8-SPARKY. Did you know that a dirty CPAP system could make you sick? 
If you knew what could be growing in your mask and hose, it would keep you up at night. <gasps> now, SoClean.com has released the world's first automated hands-free CPAP cleaner and sanitizer. With its patented design, SoClean is fast, effective, and hands-free, killing 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs and bacteria. Try SoClean now through this special TV offer, risk-free for 30 days. Just call 800-604-0398. The SoClean works and it's a really effective product and I couldn't believe how easy it was to use. SoClean works on all popular CPAP machines and masks, destroying CPAP germs and bacteria without the daily hassle of washing your system by hand. Just place your mask in, close the lid and walk away. Voila! Sanitized and ready to use. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. This is a limited time offer. Call now, 800-604-0398 or visit SoClean.com today. Planning a Carnival Fantasy Cruise out of Mobile? Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza Hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. Everyone's buzzing about Suncoast View, live at 9 on ABC7. I like watching the Suncoast View. I like the Suncoast View. The cooking segments, I love the recipes, the theater segments are terrific. Join Stephanie Roberts, Linda Carson, and Joey Panic on Suncoast View for hot topics, everyday issues, celebrities, food, fashion, fitness, and everything in between. Nothing is off limits. They're just fun. For smart, fun talk in the morning, watch Suncoast View, live at 9, weekdays on ABC7. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service, it's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Now, sports. The Tampa Bay Rays hoping for a win tonight against the New York Yankees. New York has won seven of nine, but hasn't been able to make up any ground on AL East leading Boston. The Rays keep that trend going. They beat New York six to one this evening. Well, baseball fans still have some time to catch a free game at Ed Smith Stadium in Sarasota. The stadium is currently hosting the Baltimore Orioles Gulf Coast League. It gives recently drafted or signed players their first experience in professional baseball. And the best part, get this, it's totally free. There are four games left this season. That's on your screen. The schedules are subject to change, of course, due to weather and field conditions. So get out there if you can. Well, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Nashville tonight joining the Tennessee Titans on the field for their first of two joint practices at the St. Thomas Sports Park before their second preseason game, matching the top two picks in the 2015 NFL Draft, Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota. And in a joint practice between the Texans and 49ers, a fight between two players, DeAndre Hopkins and Jimmy Ward, going at it on the field. You see there, it takes several people to tear them apart and break it up. They are big guys. Word is both of those players got booted from practice after that. Texans fans saw it all go down. Today is the third open practice. So look at sports. We'll have tonight's winning lotto numbers when we come back. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP is the largest locally owned CPAP supply company in the area. Is it time to replace your old equipment? The staff at Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP can show you the most up-to-date CPAP equipment and supplies to meet your sleep apnea needs, including portable travel devices and the SoClean Automatic CPAP Sanitizer. We serve all of Southwest Florida, giving the highest quality of care with the finest CPAP equipment. Please visit our website, sarasotacpap.com. If you think it's hot outside, just wait until you see even hotter savings inside. Only at Rugs As Art Hot Summer Savings Sale Event will you find the lowest prices on a vast selection of stunning rugs, furniture accents, and accessories. 
This special event only happens once a year, so hurry in before the best selections are gone. The hot summer savings event ends soon, so don't miss out on the best prices ever. Rugs as Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing, and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. The Florida Lottery winning numbers are sponsored by Frontier Fios. Well, this king has great <laughs> reflexes. He either loves or hates his music box. We can't quite tell if you look closely. Well, this video posted to Twitter is going oh, viral. Man. It now has more than 400,000 views. You know, he's trained to kind of attack things that I guess right. would pop, pop out up. at you. Poor little Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. He wants to play with it. I just saw a dog do a kiki dance, too. <laughs> I'll be on soon, I'm sure. Love it. All right. Well, thank you, Bob, and thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you back here.